My child is sleeping. Been a little busy lately. Not only have I been dealing with that, but I've had to plant some extremely heavy trees and rocks. You don't plant rocks. This video in particular though, is one that I've been asked to make for quite a long time because if you use a S1 or an S1H and you're shooting video with it, you'll come to know that the autofocus is not really anything to be excited about. This video though doesn't just apply to those who own a S1 or an S1H, it applies to anybody that you know is a content creator, a filmmaker, a videographer, everybody. If you shoot video, this applies to you. You'll come to learn that when you are shooting videos, there are times where you just have to flip your focus into manual because autofocus, it may be autofocusing, but it may not be autofocusing to what you want to do. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting passionate. We're waking him up. And yeah, right now we live in a world where there are cameras out there that have incredible autofocus and the Sony a7 III, it's actually right here. The Sony a7 III being one of them. And I shot on this camera for, I want to say, almost two years, maybe a year and a half. And even though the autofocus is great, when I was shooting my wedding videos, there were still times that I needed to flip it over into manual in order to get a certain look or in order to just get the camera to do what I wanted it to. So these tips that I'm going over, I use quite often, not just with the Panasonic, but with cameras that have good autofocus. Speaking of these tips, we're going to split them up into two different categories. The first one being manual focusing techniques. The second being tools that can aid you did I just do three? <laughs> the second being tools that can aid you while you're in manual focus. And we'll be showing examples on how to utilize all of them. One last thing, my name is Dustin, your video tour guide, and please keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. Currently, I don't have a schedule in mind, but I'm hoping it's a place where you can come and chat with me if you have questions about camera, gear, or just life in general, or you just wanna come hang out with me and get to know me a little bit more. Link to my channel is in the description. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to split these tips into two different categories, techniques and tools. Let's start with techniques. There are 10 different techniques that you may have to use when you're shooting in manual focus. Technique number one is to set your focus and maintain roughly the same distance from when you set your focus. This doesn't just apply to shots where someone is walking or you're following some kind of subject. For example, take a look at this close-up shot. Instead of trying to move my focus ring, I was just leaning with my body forward and backwards when I would lose focus a bit. This also helps make it seem like when things go out of focus, there was more of a purpose to it. Which brings me to technique number two, which is smooth movements. The biggest advice I have is if your subject goes out of focus, don't panic and start cranking your ring around. Don't be this guy, okay? What do we call that guy? Don't be a worry wart when you go out of focus, okay? I realize when you're first getting used to shooting manual, you can't really help it. I myself am still guilty of this sometimes, but this can really add more purpose to the shot going in and out of focus. Speaking of going in and out of focus, technique number three is all about this. There are a few different ways that you can do this technique. The first is to set your focus on your subject, then you move your starting position and have your subject stay where they are then move to bring your subject into focus. So your subject is standing still, and then you move forward or you move backwards, whichever you prefer. This is one of my favorite moves to do for a lot of videos that I shoot, especially if you have a super shallow depth of field. It just looks so good when you do this, like, mm. You can also do the opposite of what I said, and instead of you moving, have your subject move. Have your subject stand where you want them to end their move and grab your focus, then have them go to their starting position and then have them walk into focus. This is another technique that I love to do in any kind of video. It really just adds a whole new dynamic to the shot and it's something that you just can't do with autofocus. This kind of goes into technique number four, which is kind of a dumb technique, but it can be really helpful if you're having a hard time getting focus and that is to stand still. Trying to rack focus is already hard enough 
And sometimes adding a whole other element to that by walking forward or backwards and trying to track focus is really difficult. So maybe consider just standing still or putting the camera on a tripod and try tracking that way. Technique number five is kind of a difficult one and will come as you get better and more comfortable with manual focus, but be predictive with your focus instead of reactive. And so what I mean by this is instead of trying to track your subject, Think about what direction they're moving and what you have to do in order to stay with them. For example, if they're walking towards you, try to rack focus at the same rate they are walking towards you. This is a pretty difficult technique to get good at, and I won't lie, it's still something that I'm trying to get better at. Technique number six isn't really a technique, but if you have the luxury, do multiple takes or have a good plan in place. There are plenty of times where I have to do quite a bit of takes in order to get the shot in focus. Like in this video where I was doing a bunch of whip pans, I had to do pretty much all of these shots at least three, four, or more times until I felt like I got what I needed. And this is the same with one of the previous techniques that I mentioned is sometimes yet when I set my focus and walk into focus or have my subject walk into focus, I gotta do multiple takes. Sometimes I walk too far or my subject walks too far and I have to do another take. Even in autofocus, there are times it doesn't do exactly what you want and you end up having to do more takes. So don't be afraid to do multiple until you're happy. Technique number seven is to use references in frame. This is kind of more for live events or times where you're just, you know, on run and gun shooting. For example, maybe you're shooting a concert and you're waiting for the singer to come out. You can try focusing on the mic so that way when they come out, you're giving yourself a better chance of them being in focus. Or maybe you're shooting a wedding ceremony and sometimes there's not always a mic there. If I really have to, I'll tilt down to the floor and focus roughly where they'll be standing and then I tilt back up. That way when they walk in, I've got a better chance of getting them in an acceptable focus range before I can come and tweak it so it's perfect. Now keep in mind, you can use a combination of all these techniques to help you nail focus. But sometimes the best things to do if you're having trouble still is technique number eight, which is to choose a higher aperture. Now I love to have a super blurry bokeh background, super blurry bokeh background. I feel like that needs to be like a shirt or something. Say that 10 times fast. Super blurry bokeh background. <laughs> Super blurry bokeh background. Anyways, moving on. But sometimes it's just better to be safe than sorry. Shooting at a higher aperture makes that focus plane much easier to work with, especially if you go up to something like an F11 or higher. A lot of the times I do this when I'm shooting at a wider focal length because I want everything in my scene to be in focus. But you can do this in a lot of different scenarios. And yes, there won't be much of that bokeh, but at least you know you are getting the focus right. Technique number nine, again, isn't really a technique. <laughs> Why did I even call them techniques then? I just realized that, that I've had like three techniques where I'm like, this isn't really a technique. Okay, it's a technique. It's more just about keeping the final video in mind. What I mean by this is, let's say you're shooting everything in slow motion, and you know this video is going to be very fast paced or you're only going to hold about three or five seconds on each shot. I think the reason a lot of people ask how I shoot in manual and keep things in focus, they don't realize I'm selecting the best takes in post or I'm doing things that hide parts that were out of focus so you don't notice it as much. Kind of like in the fitness promo I did, there were a lot of times everything went out of focus, but it's so fast paced and I use speed ramps to move between the out of focus parts and the in focus parts, so it really hides the out of focus parts. You can also add some of these techniques in post, like technique number two, where you walk into focus. It takes some keyframing, but maybe you only had one take of your subject walking, and you wanna give that shot a nice rack focus, you have the ability to do that. I will say it definitely doesn't beat capturing it organically in camera, but it works in a pinch. Remember, there's a lot of tricky things that you can do in post that really help to make your video and shots more dynamic when it comes to focusing. This leads to technique number 10, which is to remember focus is another storytelling element and to use it to your advantage. I briefly kind of touched on this, but the biggest thing to take away from shooting manual is to remember it's okay if your shot goes out of focus for a bit. Think about all the movies, documentaries, and videos out there. They are not always in focus 100% of the time. You will even see sometimes in the video or movie shots where the subject goes out of focus and slowly comes back into focus. Or even in documentaries where the camera will hunt for focus for a second and come into focus. And they'll do it a lot, especially if it's just the style that they shot that particular video for. So use these techniques to your advantage and remember it's just as much of a storytelling element as every other choice you make on the camera. Let's move on to the tools that can help with shooting in manual focus. Some of these tools are going to be nothing new to you, 
but maybe it'll make you consider trying some of these out if you're still struggling to find the balance with manual focus. The first tool is focus peaking. We've all probably heard of peaking, but it's something that I use probably 90% of the time when I'm shooting manual. Some people realize this too, but you can actually change the color of the peaking on the camera. Some cameras have more flexibility when it comes to the color you can choose. For example, there's a ton of different colors you can choose on the Panasonic S1H. I like to use this kind of light blue color. Some of the colors you choose will just be too similar to the colors in your scene, so it makes it more difficult to actually see your peaking. So don't be afraid to change the colors based on your situation. Other cameras like the Sony only have like three peaking color options, which is kind of unfortunate. So hopefully in some newer versions, they add the option to customize this more. You can also choose the strength of the peaking. A lot of the time when I turn it all the way up, there's just way too much peaking going on everywhere. I like to choose either mid or one step below the highest setting. I realize too, peaking doesn't work for everybody and it can be more of a distraction than a useful tool. The second tool is to use magnification. A lot of the time you won't have the luxury of being able to use this, but then again, a lot of the time you will be able to use it. If you're doing some product shots or a model shoot, try customizing your camera so this is super easy to access, and that way you are able to punch in really quick, grab focus, and punch out. This is where it's also useful to set up your camera so it's easy to toggle peaking on and off as well, so if you do need to punch in, you can turn these things off and really see your focus. I don't remember if this is true or not, but I feel like I heard somewhere that in the next firmware update on the Panasonic, you're gonna have the ability to punch in and focus while you're recording. So I'm pretty sure you can do that on the Sonys and it's, it's really nice. Anyways, I'm excited for that feature to be added if I'm remembering it correctly. Like I said though, maybe you won't always have the luxury of being able to punch in and focus. This is where tool number three comes in handy, which is to use an external monitor. The little viewfinder on the camera works decent, but a bigger monitor can really help make it easier. Now I've gone basically my whole career not owning an, ex an external monitor. I do want one, but if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know I'm cheap. The most popular external monitors out there are really pricey. I'm mostly talking about the Atomos and the small HD products. Now don't get me wrong, I do use these and they are great when they're necessary, but I'm a very minimal type of shooter. So the less weight the, and the less things that I have to deal with, the better. Even in a lot of situations, like for example, shooting these YouTube videos, an external monitor would be really handy because like the screen flips out, but I have to lean over here in order to see it. So if it was just like right here below, it'd be really nice. There are some other external monitors out there that seem to get some good reviews, and I've linked those in the description, but the one advantage to an Atomos is the ability to record externally and get higher bit depths and different codecs for your footage. If you're someone like me though, I don't really need that right now. So honestly, one of these other monitors would probably work better for me. Tool number four is a focus motor or a focus wheel. I actually have a broken one right here. It's one of these. Focus on it. Now, if you're shooting handheld, these can be super useful, but once you add like a gimbal or a stabilizer into the equation, it's extremely difficult to shoot manual unless you have some kind of focus motor. When I'm shooting on my Ronin S, I am using a focus motor no matter what. It takes some getting used to, and you will for sure start building up some forearm strength, because yeah, I'm only holding it with this arm and I'm focusing with this with this hand, but it makes it much easier to control your focus. If you are shooting handheld and still finding it difficult, maybe try using the focus wheel. And this one I have is pretty bulky, but they do have some that are much smaller, more portable options out there. These also change the way you focus. So if you're having a hard time wrapping your head around focusing, you know, like this, a focus wheel makes it much easier for your brain to wrap your head around where you're focusing since you could turn the wheel the direction you want to focus instead of clockwise or counterclockwise. Some lenses out there are inverted, so it can get kind of confusing, so be sure to keep that in mind, but a focus wheel can really help. The last and final tool is you. What I mean by this is practice. You will only be as good as the amount of time you put into practicing these techniques and becoming more comfortable with all the tools available. I'm very comfortable shooting manual since I've done it for quite a few years, but that doesn't mean I'm flawless all the time. I just know how to utilize everything to my advantage because of how much practice and experience I've had. I am still learning though, and I'm always trying to improve. You'll never stop learning, and let's be honest, if you feel like you don't have any more to learn or practice, shame on you because you're getting in the way of your growth as a filmmaker. Sorry, that got a little serious 
there for a second. Moving on, that is everything I have for this video. Hopefully you found these tips helpful, and if you did, be sure to give the video a double thumbs up. And if you wanna have a more personal conversation with me, be sure to either reach out to me on Instagram or come pop into my Twitch. Links to everything is down in the description, and I've got more videos in the works as well, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button if you wanna be notified when I upload those videos. But until then, happy filming.